Komal Patan and uh, Professor uh, Mike has a very strong background on uh, Altamatrix. Uh, and uh, today, uh, Professor Mike will be speaking on the topic of Altamatrix. How is it important in, uh, in um, uh, I mean, uh, measuring the quality of publications? and the quality of publications uh, and that are being circulated through social media. I am happy to inform you, Professor Mike, that today we have registered for this particular webinar 685 uh, participants, those who have registered for the particular um, uh, webinar program. So now uh, this topic uh, is very popular uh, uh, bibliometrics, scientometrics, uh, infometrics, webometrics, altermetrics, uh, and we teach to our postgraduate students as part of research methodology course. And also it is a very in-depth paper for our doctoral students, PhD students as course coursework. So you can know that now uh, in our uh, all scientific organization, R&D organizations, um, and the library and information community, we are very much uh, serious about all these uh, metrics uh, and um, how it helps in their academic and uh, research career. With this background, I would now like to request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor, uh, Professor Sambhasiva Rao to speak a few words. And um, our, our VC is so much uh, I mean, uh, he's a motivating factor, a major driving force because he is from science background. So how much motivation and that uh, he, he pursues to our scholars, uh, to teachers, um, that how it is the quality of a publication which can bring reputation and visibility of the institution worldwide. Now I request our honorable vice chancellor to speak a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, honorable uh, speaker of the day, Professor uh, Mike Telwal. Uh, thank you very much for Mike uh, for accepting our invitation to speak on very important topic of altimetrics, uh, uh, which is very important nowadays uh, for all science subjects and particularly data science people, which is very useful and also very uh, uh, pertinent topic for uh, improving their citations and visibility of the work, uh, research work which they carry out in their uh, uh, studies. And uh, it is actually, uh, the Altimetrics is one of the uh, area where it is a complementary to their traditional citation-based uh, uh, matrices. Because traditional citation-based matrices uh, is actually goes with the only scientific people and uh, it is not going to the the general public and also sometimes uh, it is not known to many people who are actually connected and associated people uh, in these areas of their areas of research. But basing on this altimetrics, actually people can improve their visibility to many uh, area, many uh, sectors of people and also their citation analysis can also be very well improved. And uh, the uh, citation analysis of Mike, Professor Mike, is uh, more than 39,000, uh, around 40,000 citations. Uh, that itself shows uh, how uh, Professor Mike has uh, made a lot of, uh, and made a uh, um, depth analysis on this particular area. And uh, the participants, particularly students and research scholars, should understand and listen to him. Uh, the importance of uh, citation analysis and also altimetrics uh, uh, alternative met, uh, matrices, uh, how to improve their uh, visibility of their research work and also to get a recognition in the scientific world. So it will be an opportunity for everyone to understand, even as administrator also, I should also uh, get some knowledge on this particular area of science. And I will be very much uh, delighted to listen to him and I will be listening to his whole lecture and I will be uh, happy to be party in this particular one. Thank you very much once again, Professor Mike, for accepting our invitation and uh, pressing on this occasion. Thank you, sir. Now I request uh, Professor Mike uh, for his uh, presentation and addressing to our participants. 
Okay, thank you very much, Professor Rao and Professor Rath and uh, Dr. Verma. I'll uh, start the presentation now. I, I, I'll take Professor Mike one minute. I will take before you give uh, your presentation. I will now request my uh, colleague who is a professor of our department, Narke Nurting Kumar, to say a few words uh, on this particular topic. Professor okay. R.K. Nurting Kumar, please. Professor Nitin Kumar, you are there? I think he is not there. Hello? I think... He has come. He has come. Yeah. Last. Yes, please continue, Professor Kuno. Hello? Please continue. Yes, please continue. Yes, I am here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor K.R.S. Sambhashiva Rao, respected head of the department, Professor Rath, uh, our webinar speaker, Professor Mike Helwell, my colleague, Dr. Manos Kumar Verma, and dear participants. It is my great privilege to introduce our great speaker of today's webinar, Professor Mike Helwell. Mike Helwell is working at the University of Wolverhampton, UK since 1989. Presently, he is a professor of data science and heading the Statistical Cybermetric Research Group at the University of Wolverhampton. Professor Helwell is a pioneer in the field of biometrics research. His publications include more than 400 different journal articles and four books, such as What Association Thematic Analysis, a social media text exploration strategy, and has developed the free program, Webometric Analysis, analysis to extract data for the webometric indicators and mosaic for sentiment analysis. He has developed a wide range of software and method for gathering and analyzing web data for Twitter, YouTube, and the web in general. He has more than 39,000 Google Scholar citations, H index and I10 index, S95 and 40T, respectively. He is part of the independent review of the role of metrics in research assessment, commissioned by Higher Educational Funding Council for England. He is an associate editor of the Journal of the Association for Information Science and Technology and sits on five other editorial boards. He is an original thinker of some trending areas of research in LAS like web content analysis, sentiment analysis, and others. We are very, very fortunate to have him in our webinar. We really thankful Professor Mike for being our webinar speaker thank you thank you thank you professor puno nothing kumar now i request professor mike for his uh, presentation okay thank you thank you very much for that wonderful introduction so i'll uh, start sharing the slides and hopefully you should see my hopefully you should see my screen now Yes, yes, we can see your screen. Yes, started. Present. Okay, fantastic. But so I'm going to. Maybe. Wait, wait, wait. So I'm going I'm to talk, talk about, about uh, using. Mm -hmm. using um, I'm going to talk about using altmetrics to support research evaluation. So I'm going to talk partly from a user perspective and partly from a, a research perspective. And, um, and this is because my research involves uh, 
Altmetrics. So I use Altmetrics to do research and I also consult Altmetrics as part of my um, scholarly activity. So I'm a user and a researcher of Altmetrics. So I'm going to talk from both perspectives a little bit in this presentation. So I'll just say a little bit about uh, Wolverhampton, where uh, my university is. It's in the UK, in the middle of the UK. It's a small city, 263,000 people, 18% South Asian in uh, Wolverhampton. So we're a very lucky city uh, in England. So I thought I would give a little bit of background first about citation analysis before introducing altmetrics. So um, the citation analysis has already been mentioned in the introduction, but uh, I'll just give a, a brief introduction to citation analysis. So if you're a researcher, if you're an academic researcher, then as part of what you do, you'll produce some publications. For most areas of research, the publications, the main publications that you produce are journal articles. Although you might also produce books, reports, conference papers, depending on which area of research that you're in. So if you apply for a job or a promotion or a grant, then you will submit your CV and a list of publications and then the people making the decision will want to know how good your publications are, how useful they are, or uh, evaluate them in, in some way. So the people that evaluate your research might partly assess the value of your research by the number of uh, citations to your, to your publications or the journal in which the publication appears. So they might look to see if your papers have been published in good journals or not. And you might be more likely to get the job or get the grant or get the promotion if you've published in good journals. And they might also look to see if your articles have been cited a lot. So if many other papers have cited your um, articles. So a citation to an article means that someone else doing their research has listed your article in their reference list. So a, ref, a, a mention in a reference list from another article gives you a citation to your article. So if your paper has a citation count of say 100, then that means 100 other academic articles have listed your paper in the reference list. So it's had a big impact on science if 100 people have used it. So citation counts are quite widely used in research evaluation, um, but it's important to be critical about the value of citation counts. So a high citation count isn't always good. And you can have a, a good article that doesn't have a high citation count. So it's, a, it's an indicator. A high citation count is an indicator that an article is a good one, has had a high impact, but it's not proof. It's not complete proof. And you've probably also heard of journal impact factors, which are published by um, Clarivate in the Web of Science and uh, Scopus also published their own journal impact factors and other organizations public, publish journal impact factors. And they're a score for every journal based on how often the articles in the journal get cited. So these are sometimes also used in uh, um, evaluations. So sometimes evaluations look at the exact impact factor of a journal or they might look at uh, which uh, whether the journal is in the top 25 percent the top quartile q1 of the of the web of science or the second quartile or the third or the fourth quartile so journal impact factors are also based on citations so a lot of the evaluation indicators that the scores that are used to help evaluations come from citations so in this talk, I'm going to focus on altmetrics, which are complements to citation counts. So they're not intended to replace citation counts, but they're in, intended as a extra bit of information about articles. So what are altmetrics? So I don't know whether you've heard of altmetrics before. So I'll give a, a brief introduction. So essentially they're counts of 
either citations or mentions of academic outputs derived from the social web or elsewhere online. So whereas the traditional citation count only counts citations from journal articles usually, sometimes also books in uh, databases like the Web of Science or Scopus, uh, altmetrics count citations from the web as well. So the social web, it might be from Twitter or Facebook, or it might be from blogs, or it might be from anything else that's published online. So an altmetric is a, is a type of citation count, but it's not from the standard databases, it's from somewhere on the web, essentially. So for example, the tweet account is an altmetric, and this counts how many users have tweeted about an article. So maybe your article has a citation count of 10, meaning that 10 other articles have cited it, and a tweet account of 20, meaning that 10 Twitter users have tweeted about your article. So that's an example of an altmetric. And uh, here's an example of an article with a, a very high tweet account. So this article about um, uh, COVID-19 in Wuhan, China, it's been tweeted by 31,000 people. So this has got a very high Twitter account, tweet account. It's one of the highest of any uh, academic articles. So um, this, the little box at the bottom of the screen gives you a number of altmetric scores. So there's a news stories altmetric 51, a blog altmetric, blog count altmetric nine, tweet account altmetric 31,088, a Facebook post altmetric 29, a Reddit altmetric 28, and a video altmetric 7. So there's a list of altmetrics here. So if you know where to look, and I'll, I'll mention this in a little bit where you can find them, you can see lots of different altmetric scores for academic research. So the important question to ask is why? would we bother to use altmetrics when we already have citation counts? And there are a number of reasons why altmetrics are useful. And the first one is that, um, well, academic research is not just for academic knowledge building. Hopefully as researchers, we influence the world, the world outside academia as well. And um, so citation counts only reflect impact inside academia, mentions by other academic documents. So um, that doesn't tell you the full story about how valuable a paper is. So this means that counts of citations from journal articles, so normal citation counts, they don't reflect commercial or societal impact because um, business doesn't cite academic research in academic papers, often anyway. It, they don't reflect arts and humanities impacts because arts and humanities research is rarely published in, in journal articles. Um, they don't reflect educational use. If you've written a paper which is used in hundreds of universities around the world, you don't get any citation counts for that. Um, and in some countries, the web of science doesn't cover the national journals very well. So I suspect that in India, in some areas of research, the web of science doesn't cover the, the journals, maybe um, uh, botany type research, the web of science doesn't cover Indian journals very well. So in, in that, um, in this regard, if you're a researcher in this area, then the citation counts from the web of science wouldn't be very useful. And finally, citation counts are very slow to accumulate. So if you do research, it, it might take three years to know three years after your research is published to know um, the citation count that you're likely to get for that research in the long term. So it's a very slow process. So altmetrics were um, developed, well, 20 years ago, really, they started to be developed to try and fill some of these gaps. So in this talk, I'll, talk, I'll uh, discuss whether they've filled some of these gaps and the extent to which they've filled some of these gaps. Okay, so some examples of art metrics. So educational impact is a, 
at alt there are alt matrix for educational impact. So there's an alt matrix for syllabus mentions. So the, the score you get for the syllabus mention alt metric is the number of academic syllabuses that list the article um, as a further reading or a bibliography. So this reflects educational impact because if your article is mentioned in a syllabus in the university somewhere, then that means the students have been told to read it um, to help in their learning. So you're generating educational impact. Another example uh, for public interest or engagement in academic research, which is very important, getting the public interest in research and learning from research, then you might use tweet counts or blog citations. So Twitter and blogs where you might expect the public to engage with academic research or share academic research that they consider interesting. And arts and humanities impact, you might use the Google book citation count. So this is uh, like a traditional citation count in the web of science, except it counts citations from books instead of from journal articles. And this is where uh, most humanities research goes and a lot of arts research goes in books rather than journal articles. A health impact. So if your research has a, uh, helps people get healthier, then you might be cited in uh, health guidelines. So the official government health guidelines um, might mention your research and then that would be uh, an altmetric. That would give you an altmetric score for each mention to show that you're influencing health. And uh, commercial impact is a pattern citation altmetric, which is the number of patents that have cited the paper. And another altmetric, which I'm going to talk about a bit more, this is a little bit of a strange one, but of a useful one, is the Mendeley reader count. So I'll mention more about what that is. So it's an early impact, early academic impact altmetric. Okay, so where can you get the evidence about the altmetrics from, where can you get altmetrics from? So there are lots of different places where you can get them from. So there are organizations that uh, collect altmetrics. These include uh, altmetric.com is uh, probably the main collector of altmetrics. Um, so they're a business that uh, co collect data from the web and uh, compile it into lots of different altmetrics. So the ones that you see at the top of the screen use data from altmetric.com. Um, probably the most convenient way to access altmetrics though is dimensions.ai. So this is a, a academic search engine, a bit like Google Scholar. Um, it's also free, but it reports altmetrics for every article in its database. So if you use dimensions.ai, find your article, um, and then you'll get a, a button an altmetric button next to your article as shown at the top of the screen. And then uh, you can use, you can see the altmetric scores for your article. And there are other providers like uh, impactstory.org and Plum Analytics that I'll mention again later that also provide different altmetrics. And you can also collect your own altmetrics with uh, the Webometric Analyst software. So this is my own program which um, I use to automatically either create or collect altmetrics. So, uh, so this is a, a box of altmetrics from altmetric.com. So um, if you want to do research into altmetrics, then they will give you all their data for free. So they're very good at sharing their data for nothing. So, um, if you have a large collection of documents that you want to get the altmetrics for, then you can request permission to access altmetric.com data from them. And then you'll get scores like this, you see in this box for all the articles that you ask for. And you can also, if you want to just know the altmetric scores for articles that you're reading, you can install the altmetric bookmarklet so if you go to the Altmetric website, they have a free bookmarklet, which means that um, whenever you look at an academic paper, you can click a button 
and um, the altmetric score for that paper will appear. So this is the this is what happens after clicking the altmetric bookmarklet on this particular paper, also a COVID-19 paper. So you ski, see all the different scores for that paper. So that's another way of identifying altmetrics. And this is some data from Plum Analytics, which is uh, owned by Elsevier. And this illustrates the fact that if you buy the altmetric data from one of the providers, so that would be Plum Analytics or altmetric.com, these are the two main organizations that sell um, altmetrics. So they will sell you not just the data, but they will sell you um, summary statistics based on the data. So if you, so they primarily target universities, whole universities, and they will sell the whole university, all the data for the university, all the metric data for the university, as well as um, software to convert the data into graphs like the one that you're um, seeing here. So this is a graph of the uh, altmetric scores, the average altmetric scores or the, no total altmetric scores, but all the articles published by a chemistry department of some university. So you can see how the university is improving or getting worse year by year with this data. So the, the altmetric data providers mainly um, target universities to sell their data to, but you could, they also give it free for researchers. Okay, so I've talked mainly about the advantages of altmetrics and where you can get them, but there are also disadvantages of uh, altmetrics or alternative indicators. So the main disadvantage is that they're easy to manipulate. Almost all of them are very easy to manipulate. And that's because there's no quality control for the social web, for example. Um, so if you want your paper to have lots of people tweeting about it, then you could set up lots of Twitter accounts yourself and tweet your own article. And there's nothing to stop you doing that. It'll just take a while, but there's nothing to stop you from doing that. And in fact, if you publish an article, it's probably a good idea to tweet about it, to tell your friends and your colleagues. So tweeting about your own research, at least from one account, is a reasonable thing to do, but it gets counted in the altmetric, the, the tweet account altmetric. And it's difficult to check to see if the data has been manipulated from altmetrics. So if you really spent a lot of time on it, you could set up hundreds of anonymous Twitter accounts and get a, tw a, a tweet account of, uh, of hundreds for your articles. And it'd be difficult to prove that you did that. And if you really wanted to be cynical, you could even pay people to do this. So most of the altmetrics, you could pay someone to give you a high score. So they're not, um, they're not uh, safe enough to use in formal research evaluations. So I would, uh, so in my group, I would never say to someone, if you get 100 tweeters, tweets about your paper, then you'll be promoted because they can pay 50 pounds to an organization that will tweet their research 100 times and then get the promotion. So it's uh, too easy to manipulate. And also, Accidental manipulation happens. Um, so some of the highly tweeted articles have funny titles and people tweet them as a joke rather than for the value of their research. So that just naturally happens. And, um, and it's fair for people to promote their work using social media and this inflates their um, old metric score. And also, all the alternative indicators reflect uh, the actions of uh, not everyone in the world, but just the people that use the web and use whichever site is involved. So in the UK, I think 12% of people use Twitter. So if you use a tweet account, it doesn't reflect the majority of the population of the UK. So there are lots of disadvantages of alternative indicators of altmetrics. So because of these disadvantages, it's important to check whether in practice they do have value or not. So uh, the, the research area of uh, altmetrics investigates whether altmetrics have value in practice. 
So how do we evaluate whether alt metrics are useful in practice or not? Um, so the common evaluation methods that we use for alt metrics are, uh, first of all, face validity checks with content analysis. So in other words, we check to see if, um, for example, tweets are ac academic research, do they, um, do they reflect other academics tweet about research or the general public tweet about research? Do they reflect interest in research or jokes about research? So we need to read a sample of tweets about academic research to decide whether counting these tweets reflects public interest, academic interest or something else. So in general, studies that have looked at tweets about academic research have concluded that they um, tend to be about half from the public and half from academics and tend to just publicize an article rather than um, explain how the article is used. So the most common type of evaluation method is a statistical evaluation method to check to see that the results are not too biased. And the way that this is normally done is with a correlation test. So if you have the altmetric scores, say the tweet accounts or the Facebook counts, or some other alt metric, if you have that, those scores for say a thousand articles, you can check to see if these scores correlate with the citation counts for the same thousand articles. And if the statistical correlation test is positive and statistically significant, then that tells you that the bias is not too big. If there is a bias, then it's not too big. Um, and the data isn't random. And then finally, the you can do pragmatic uh, checks. So these are tests to see if decision making is improved when alt metrics are taken into account. So there aren't many of these studies done, the pragmatic studies. Most of the studies so far have been statistical. And I'll um, mention some of those. I'll, I'll focus on statistical tests in the rest of the article, uh, the rest of this talk. So back to correlations, which are the main statistical test. So a correlation with citations, it gives evidence that, first of all, the alternative indicators are not random. So some of them, the tweet accounts, for example, they might look quite random, but because they have positive correlations with citation counts, we can see they're not really random. So they do tell you something about articles and that they're related to scholarly communication. So they are, um, they're not completely divorced from academic quality or academic impact. And the extent to which they, they behave similarly to citation counts. So one of the indicators, the uh, Mendeley reader counts, behaves very similarly to citation counts, has a very high positive correlation with citation counts. But most of the others have very low uh, correlations with citation counts, suggesting that there are uh, they reflect other types of uh, aspects of the articles. So not academic impact, but other types of impact, perhaps. OK, so I'll go through some of the alt metrics. There are lots and lots of alt metrics, but I'm just going to go through my favorite ones, to be honest, the ones I like best. So the first type is the Mendeley readers. So these are my absolute favorite. And you might not know what Mendeley is, so I'm going to say a little bit about Mendeley first. So Mendeley is a reference manager. It's a free reference manager. You can join Mendeley online and you can use it to help manage your academic references and to make reference lists. So it's like EndNote, maybe use EndNote or uh, RefWorks so the, or Zotero. There are lots of different reference managers. Mendeley is just one of the reference managers. Um, it's used by about um, one in 12 researchers, according to a nature survey about uh, five years ago. So it's, I think it's the most popular reference manager, Mendeley, but it's the, the most popular one that gives out free uh, altmetric data. So what's the altmetric data you get from Mendeley? It's the number of users that have registered interest in an article by adding it to their own Mendeley library. So we call that the, the reader count the, or the Mendeley reader count. So that's an, an alt metric. 
Um, so you know, I've just taken this from the Mendeley website. This is a screenshot from the Mendeley website from uh, this morning. Um, so you can see you can download. It's a Mendeley is a program you can download to your computer, and um, it allows you to manage your references. So at the right of the screen, you can see someone's library, and it's got a list of uh, academic references in there. So for each of these references, that will add one to the read account of the article. So if you went to the home page of the first article, you might find its read account was 17, and that 17 would mean that 17 different Mendeley users had added that article to their libraries. So it's a strange art metric. It's a count of the number of people that uh, have added an article to their Mendeley reference manager library but we call it a Mendeley read account for short. So uh, a survey of, um, of uh, Mendeley users, as we'll see in a bit, shows that they tend to be readers. So people that have read the article or intend to read it. So we call this the read account. So what's the evidence? So lots of correlation tests between Mendeley readers and citations all show uh, moderate to strong correlations between Mendeley readership counts and citation counts in almost all research fields. So Mendeley reader counts reflect the same kinds of impact as citation counts. And uh, their early impact evidence, they appear about a year before citations. So you can do an impact evaluation one year earlier with Mendeley readers than you can with uh, citations. So that's very valuable for um, timely evaluations. And uh, they reflect mainly scholarly impact and partly educational impact. So I've put up pictures of the researchers that have done the research that have uh, found this out. So um, they're very high quality art metrics. They can be manipulated, but they don't seem to be manipulated and they provide very strong evidence of scholarly impact, but there are advantages that it's early impact. Okay, second alt metric. So this is the most commonly known alt metric, I think, the tweet account. So what's the evidence for that? So tweets seem to reflect academic interest and publicity more than impact. So tweets about academic research tend to uh, encourage other people to read the article, but do not tend to show that the article has, has had an impact on the public or other academics in any way. So they seem to be for publicity, really. So tweet accounts do have positive correlations with citation counts, um, but they're very low. So um, either there's a lot of bias and noise in tweet accounts or um, they reflect a different type of impact. So I think it's probably a bit of both. And article tweets are typically just the, the titles of articles or maybe highlight of an article but with a link. Um, and that's, this means that they don't show the, the tweet. You can't read the tweet and see why an article is important or what impact an article has had. It's the tweet is really saying, read this article. So it's publicity type tweet. So another type of indicator, so this is another high quality indicator. One I've mentioned before is the uh, clinical guideline citations, which reflect health impacts. So um, uh, a citation in a clinical guideline. So in the, in the UK, we have the NICE guidelines, which are official documents that tell doctors how they should treat patients with certain conditions. So if you're a doctor and you see a patient with diabetes, then um, you can find the, the NICE guideline for diabetes on the government website, and it will tell you what uh, medications you should prescribe and uh, uh, what other things you should advise and what things you should check for. And there'll be a list of citations of the academic research that underpins the guidelines. So counting the number of citations from different clinical guidelines gives a clinical guideline alt metric. So it has very high face validity because it directly impacts the health of the population through 
the actions of doctors. So this is in contrast to Twitter. The tweets don't have very high face validity because we can't really tell what people are doing with the tweets. Um, but clinical guideline citations do have high face validity because their purpose is to affect the, the health care given to the population. And studies have also shown that citations in clinical guidelines correlate strongly and positively with academic citations. So we have uh, good evidence that they're high quality altmetrics. So the clinical guideline citations and the Mendeley reader counts are both very high quality altmetrics. Um, the tweet accounts, are much, uh, we have much less evidence that they're high quality. So they're probably low quality altmetrics. Um, so another type of study, uh, academic research study about altmetrics, this is uh, to show that one of the uses of altmetrics is valid. One of the uses is to look at the altmetric score of an article soon after it's published and then use that to predict whether it's going to be highly cited in the future or not. So uh, a study to investigate whether this is true has used altmetric scores from 2015 and then compared them to, with a regression approach, to the scope of citation counts in 2017, so two years later. So can you predict the citation count of an article two years after it's, two years before um, checking the citations? So when it's published, can you predict how many citations it will have two years later from the altmetric score? Um, so this is, yeah, so I'll, let me explain the result anyway. So uh, a study of this checked 30 different fields and found that in 29 out of 30 fields, the, the old matrix score did significantly predict the citation counts from two years later. So in general, if you find an article with high old matrix scores, you can expect it to have higher citation counts in the future. And this is what a lot of researchers do. They check the altmetric scores for articles in their favorite journals, and they'll look more carefully at articles that have high altmetric scores because they think that they're going to be important articles in the future. So it's a good way of identifying likely important articles um, as soon as they're published. So the most useful predictor is the Mendeley reader count of all the altmetrics. So for this study, we used all the altmetrics provided by altmetric.com and the Mendeley reader count was the best one. And the, all the other altmetric indicators were sometimes useful, except for two of them that I've not mentioned before, the Conatea and F1000, the altmetrics were never useful. I won't mention those again. Um, but the citation counts in 2017 can only be predicted with 20% uh, accuracy from the altmetric scores. So it's not a very accurate prediction. So it's a statistically significant prediction, but not a very accurate one. Uh, but you can improve the prediction. Um, sorry for the statistical table, but you can improve the prediction if you take into account the journal impact factor or the, in this case, we've used the Scopus equivalent, which is the site score. If you take in the into account the impact factor of the journal and then add in this, the uh, altmetric score, then you can make a much better prediction of the likely um, citation counts in the future. So an article that's in a good journal and has a high altmetric score is very likely to become highly cited. So that's what this study says. So if in your research area, if you want to find important articles that have just been published and that you need to know about to stay ahead in your research, then you should look at the, the most prestigious journals in your field and then look at the articles in those journals that have attracted the most attention through altmetric.com, have the highest altmetric scores. And those articles are the most likely to be influential in the future and become highly cited. So that's a practical um, implication of this uh, statistical study. 
Okay, so evidence summary. So there's empirical. So I won't go through all of the different um, studies of different types of art metrics. So um, I've just illustrated the the types of approaches that are used to investigate art metrics with tweet accounts, Mendele Mendeley read accounts, and the regression study with all the art metrics combined. So the but overall, the evidence shows that many alternative indicators, many alt metrics correlate with citations positively. Uh, Mendeley is the perfect indicator for early academic impact. Uh, Twitter is a very weak indicator. It's not really suitable for evaluations, but it can be useful for identifying articles that have attracted attention uh, when they're published. Um, and the other odd indicators tend to come somewhere between Mendeley and Twitter. So rarer than Mendeley and Twitter and weaker than Mendeley, but the rest tend to be a little bit stronger than Twitter. So the, all the other alt metrics are, are somewhere between Mendeley and Twitter. Um, the big problem with most alt metrics is, it's, is that it's hard to, refer, to identify the type of impact that they reflect. So citation counts typically reflect scholarly impact. And Mendeley also reflects scholarly impact. But it's very hard to say exactly what Twitter counts reflect, even though we've uh, uh, researched Twitter for a decade now. Um, but they seem to reflect publicity or interest or attention online which isn't really a type of impact. So it's, it's um, a little bit awkward to deal with. But we do know that syllabus mentions reflect educational impact. It's an educational impact indicator. And we know that the health specific indicators like the, the clinical guideline citations reflect societal health, health impact. So these are the ones that we do know about and the rest we don't really know um, enough about the type of impact that they reflect. So a lot of future research is still needed on art metrics to test the value of the indicators and particularly for different countries and different languages. So some of the art metrics are not useful in some countries. Um, for example, um, many of the art metrics are not useful in China um, because, um, for example, Twitter is not used in China, Webo is used instead, so there's no point in analyzing Chinese research with tweet accounts and same for Facebook. Um, so uh, there are national differences in the usefulness of these indicators, the old metrics. Uh, new indicators can be developed all the time, new alt metrics. So if you've got an idea for an alt metric, then you could um, test it and write a paper describing your test of it. And we also need a lot of pragmatic analyses. In other words, we need studies that use al alternative indicators, that use alt metrics to make decisions, and then assess whether the alt metrics held with the decision or not. So this is your homework. This is my final slide. So, um, so I'd like you to try looking at alt metric scores. So go to dimensions.ai and then search for documents from your field or your own documents if you prefer and then sort them by altmetric attention score. So if you look at the top of the screen, uh, middle, middle top of the screen is a sort by option and you can sort by altmetric attention score. And that puts at the top of the list, the articles with the highest um, altmetrics altogether. So here I search for COVID-19 articles and the ones with the highest altmetric scores, uh, the origin of, of, of COVID-19 is the top one. So that's the one that's been most uh, discussed probably on Twitter and um, elsewhere. So it's a, it might give you uh, an idea about interesting articles that you should know about in your field if you just do this one simple task. So go to dimensions.ai, type in a search for your field, something relevant to your field of interest, search by altmetric attention score to get the highest first and then just check to see whether these articles are interesting to you. Um, so uh, you might find out a new topic that uh, it will be useful for you to know about.
Okay, so I'm going to stop there and um, happy to answer any questions. So thank you very much for listening. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir, for your nice and very informative lectures. And uh, really, it was very good and a lot of uh, uh, message we are receiving about your lecture. Now, I would like to request our head of department, Professor Prabhagavad, to put up the question, uh, which was given, asked by the participant. One by one, we will uh, take up only few, sir, and uh, you, it is up to you how you answer it. Sir, observe it, sir. Okay. Uh, yes, Professor Mike, there are some few questions. There are a few questions from uh, participants. And um, one question was uh, uh, how uh, effective management is ultimatric, uh, uh, whether it is UK or uh, the other parts of the world, uh, effective management uh, of ultimatric. That is uh, uh, one question. And uh, there is uh, Another question about uh, sir, one sir, one by one. Otherwise, it will be difficult to answer. Okay, okay. How how is it being effectively managed in the UK and uh, other parts of the world? And what is your suggestion in this regard? Okay, thank you. This is uh, a good question. So, in the UK, I think in no country in the world is there a, a national altmetric evaluation strategy so it's uh, each university has its own policy and each university has a different approach so there are some initiatives to try to standardize approaches such as the snowball metrics which was an Elsevier in initiative of a few years ago which joined a number of different universities to try to get them to use a similar strategy but mostly universities follow their own strategies and I think the best strategy is, um, well, there are two strategies, two ways in which universities can use art metrics. The first way is to um, evaluate, uh, periodically assess art metrics for departments to look for areas of good practice. So with art metrics, if you get a high score, it probably means you're do so, doing something well, but if you get a low score, it doesn't mean that you're doing it badly. It just means that you haven't created that type of impact. So, for example, if you're a physicist, you, a physics department, you probably don't get much interest on Twitter, but that's just normal for physics. But um, um, so you can look for examples of good practice at the university level with um, altmetrics. You can find departments that are doing well and find out why they're doing well. And then you might find academics that are having a big impact in a way that you didn't know about. So in um, uh, my university, there's an academic that um, doesn't publish many papers, but he has a big impact on Twitter because he talks about the, the value of scientific research and uh, he engages with the public. So his, he, his uh, tweets represent public engagement. He gets tweets for public engagement. Okay. <clears throat> And the second way I think universities can use it is they can allow academics to report altmetrics on their own articles to, as part of their case for promotion or case for a job or case for a grant. So um, if altmetrics have generated an unusual type of impact, then they can use the altmetric scores as evidence of that impact. So if someone had had their articles used in lots of different um, core syllabuses around the world, then you, you would allow them to, to use that evidence, the old metric score for syllabus mentions in their case for promotion. So allow the researchers to do it individually if they want to, if it applies to them, or use the university level approach to find areas of good practice. So that, those are my two recommendations. Okay. There is uh, one question on Twitter, and the question is, uh, um, just reading the question. Uh, how is that, you know, if Twitter is very popular among the academics, and uh, what will happen 
uh, if uh, what will happen uh, if the Twitter uh, stops the services uh, and what will have its uh, academic and research impact? That type of question. Okay. Um, so I hope Twitter doesn't stop. So uh, Twitter has got um, better this year, much better um, for academics. So um, well, I don't think Twitter is going to stop for academics. Um, so I think uh, two of the big, biggest users of Twitter are academics, academic researchers and professionals and more generally, and also news, news and politics. So Twitter is very good for academic discussions and news and politics. And uh, this year, Twitter for the first time have given academics unrestricted access to uh, tweets. So until this year, we it was difficult to research Twitter, difficult to get their data, but now they give it all for free. So uh, it is getting much easier to use, to analyze tweets. Um, and this, uh, but we also get the tweet counts from the old metric providers like um, oldmetric.com and Plum Analytics, who collect the tweets for us. So we don't need to go directly to Twitter. But um, sometimes for studies, we do need to go directly to Twitter. If you're researching uh, alt metrics, then you do need to get the data. And now it's much easier because um, Twitter have uh, given free access to uh, their old tweets, their tweets. So it looks good for Twitter at the moment. Yeah, there is another question, how Altmetric scores supplements the traditional metrics for scholarly research evaluation? Okay. Um, so I, I see citation counts as reflecting academic impact, primarily academic impact. Um, and they, so they're good for reflecting academic impact, but also they're slow. So if I publish a paper today, then I won't really know what the citation, whether this paper will be highly cited or not for three years. So in three years time, uh, I'll find out. And three years is really a long time. So my career might, might last. 30 to 40 years. So three years is maybe 10% of my career. So it's really a, a, a long time to wait. But if I use our metrics and I publish an article today, next month I can have good old metric scores for that article. So I can have some evidence about whether the article is going to be highly cited uh, much more quickly. So that's uh, uh, useful for, for uh, earlier impact. So that's one of the values of art metrics, early impact. And the second value is um, reflecting different types of impact. So citation counts reflect only academic impact. So you can have a, an article. So this is my favorite academic article, um, found a cure for um, infant diarrhea. So this article is thought to have saved uh, 500,000 lives, at least 500,000 lives, this one article. Um, but it doesn't have many citations because it found the cure in the 1970s and um, we're still using the same cure today. So there's, there's been very little follow-up research on this paper. So it doesn't have many academic citations. It has about 2000 academic citations, I think, which is, um, okay, it's still a high number, but it's very low compared to the number of lives that this one paper has saved. So this, the value of this paper is primarily outside academia, in society, saving lives. So um, altmetrics can reflect types of impact outside academia like this. So health impacts, uh, public interest impacts, educational impacts, commercial impacts. So any type of impact which takes place outside of academia, ideally, we'd like to have an altmetric that would capture that type of impact. Thank you. And one last question we may take that the, the question of acceptance, uh, how this uh, altmetric uh, has been uh, accepted by the, the researchers? Uh, that's, uh, 
That's a tricky one. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think oh. if there have been any surveys of acceptance of altmetrics by researchers. That's all over the world. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So there, I can't. I can't think of any. Sur there must have been surveys, but I can't think of them at the moment. But my feeling is that, um, depending on which country you're in, most researchers. I think in the UK, most researchers will have heard of altmetrics and will have seen some altmetrics, and they. Uh, but they won't think of them as important to their day-to-day -day research. So there'll be something that they look at occasionally. So. For my own papers, maybe I look at the altmetrics um, maybe every month or every six months. So there's something that you could occasionally consult. Um, but if you do literature searches a lot, then the altmetrics might also help you with the literature searches. Because as I showed with dimensions.ai, you can look for the papers with the, with the high altmetric scores and that will tell you papers that seem to be interesting. And uh, so it's a good way of finding the new published research, which is already generating attention uh, and interest. So if you, so I think many researchers use art metrics to help with their literature searches. And in the UK, we have a research evaluation um, that takes place every six years where we, um, many people are using altmetrics as evidence in these research evaluations. So they're getting more systematically used in the UK probably than in most other countries uh, for this reason, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, before we hand over to Dr. Manoj Kumar Borma for giving a, extending a formal vote of thanks, let me say that this session was very productive and uh, you have elaborated uh, all the points, uh, dimensions with regard to altermetric and uh, quite beneficial for the students, scholars, and faculties. Now I request uh, my colleague, Dr. Manoj Kumar Barma to propose a formal uh, vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, uh, I, before going to formal vote of thanks, I just want to give uh, some uh, data regarding today webinar so for today webinar we have total 685 registered participants out of that 320 physically present today and uh, it is a good number and our participant is across the not only across the india even across the world also many participants from malaysia and iran even bangladesh uh, we find out from them and Sri Lanka also for some participants are there. So thank you, uh, Professor Mike Falwell, sir, for your, for your lecture. For, and uh, as a final vote of thanks, first of all, I would like to thank our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor K. R. Sammasiva Rao, who is a great academician, motivator, and always, sir, last uh, one year uh, when pandemic started, he continue every day our university is hosting some webinar and he is very kind enough to give some time for such academic program and even then he, he has a very busy schedule. So thank you so much, sir. Then uh, second, I would like to thank Professor Mike Falwell. Sir, thank you so much, sir. You are very busy man, very difficult to manage the time. Even then you accepted our request and today you deliver your very uh, knowledge, knowledgeful and very good presentation for our participants. So from department and Mizoram University, behalf of the Mizoram University, sir, thank you so much, sir. Then uh, other faculty, uh, Professor Prabhakarvat, Professor Arake Nutin Kumar, and our department faculty, uh, I also, I would like to thank them uh, because, uh, for their uh, motivation, support, and ins uh, always inspiration. No, we should do something for the department. So thank you all for your kind cooperation. And in last, I also I would like to mention acknowledge the great support of the research scholars of our department who are uh, very uh, keen to popularize our program by different social media, Facebook, and uh, uh, other social media they circulated so that 
uh, across the country, people came to know about our program. So all of them, I pay my sincere thanks on behalf of the department. And once, thank you, each and every one. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, once. With uh, permission of the head of department, now we are closing the function. Thank you, Talwil, sir. I will send you some mail and I will be in touch in future. Thank you, Dr. Mike. Okay, thank you very thank much, you. everyone. Thank right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.